You don't know what Wednesday is? No, what is that? That is crazy that you said Wednesday. Like, you haven't watched Wednesday? No. You know the Adams Family? No. <laughs> no. Like our childhood? It's the Adams Family. No, I don't. Oh, man. I feel. Get out of my house. I'm kind of embarrassed right now. What is going on, guys? It's Mega John, and we're back with another one. I do not know what episode it is. It might be 15, 16, 17. I'm here with my boy, Xavier Carmona. And Xavier has a challenge for us. Uh, Xavier has a special bottle for us. And Xavier has a lot of uh, information that we're going to start off in the beginning. But let's see what we got for the bottle today. So for the bottle today, for my Colombians, we got Aguardiente. Uh, most specifically known as Aguardiente Toqueño. El Aguardientico for my Colombians out there. Mis paisas. Oof. So I'm glad Dominican John got my Sin Azúcar. So that means that whatever we drink today, no why, headaches. Why tomorrow. do I need the Sin Azúcar? You need the Sin Azúcar as a, the blue cap because no sugar, which means no hangover tomorrow. I don't know if you guys ever gone lit off Trulies or gone lit off seltzers or wine. Like pff, next day, that shit's brutal. So, so the, is the other one sweeter? The red one, uh, it's a little sweeter, um, and it comes with sugar. So you're definitely going to be feeling it tomorrow morning. Uh, true Colombians know that if you get the blue bottle, you know, you know the vibes. <laughs> I, got, I got a couple messages, and they're like, you better have gotten the blue one. I was like, the Sinasuga sounds like shit. And I was like, fuck it. I'm going to try it out. Listen, our challenge is we're going to figure out who cuts the lime better. Uh, you know, I used to work at the bar back in the day, so I might have to kill it. And this man said he just wanted this sh sh beautiful bottle for all the beautiful Colombians that are watching because I don't want to get disrespected. Just with lime, and we got our little shot cups. Listen, my boy wants to tell you uh, where he's from, where he works, how much money he makes. Where we at, bro? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so Colombian. Uh, my parents from Colombia, uh, Western native. Um, right now, I'm a construction manager, um, most a sales manager, actually. Are you a manager? Yeah, manager. Oh, so you're a manager and an intro entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, yeah. Entrepreneur. So we're going to touch with the extra words? Yeah, we're going to touch upon that later. Okay. Uh, so it's a little different than entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is somebody that works inside the entrepreneur organization, but less headaches. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting. We'll, we'll touch upon that. But most importantly, you can make six figures, John. You can make six figures being what? An entrepreneur. And what is that? So an entrepreneur is somebody that works uh, within an entrepreneurship organization. Um, they pretty much are... An entrepreneur, so you're your own boss, uh, make your own schedule, uh, you know, run your own appointments. But essentially, you don't have to deal with all the bullshit, headaches, and all the costs that it comes with running a business. So you don't really have to stress about all that. You really just have to focus on selling. And as long as you sell, you get your percentage, make the breach. Make the breach. Yes, sir. And what do you do to make breach as a construction manager, salesperson? I don't know what that means. Yeah, so pretty cool. I mean, the first couple of years right out of college, I was, uh, you know, sales. Um, so... You know, you get pre-set appointments. You have to go to to leads, prospective clients, uh, pretty much sell them on construction, you know, outdoor remodeling. So anything from roofing, siding, uh, solar. And now that, you know, in two years, I, I proved myself. I was able to upgrade a sales manager. So now I have a few people working under me who also who do sales. Uh, you help them, you know, you know, excel. You make a percentage off their cuts. And then you also run your own appointments. So it's really cool, man. I'm, I'm really creating my own business within this organization. Um, and again, I don't have to deal with the headaches of, you know, uh, we're working in a field where it's pretty dangerous. So if somebody falls off a roof, somebody gets hurt. Um, you know, it, it's pretty stressful on the, on the owners because people can sue, but as the, the sales manager, you know, I'm really kind of away from all that. I really just have to focus on selling, making the money and, 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 and cashing out. So it's, it's pretty fun, man. And you said straight out of school and you said, well, you told me before you don't need school for this job. You really don't. What's the, you really what's the don't deal on that. What did you, where are you educated on my boy school wise? And what did you, what are you doing right now? Cause how old are you? I'm um, 25. 25 and not doing the career that you're supposed to do in, in, out of college? Yes, sir. So actually out of college, I was supposed to go to law school. I did political science in college, which um, I don't know if many of you know, but it teaches you critical thinking. It teaches you, you know, how to read between the lines per se. So it's really cool because I've actually been able to, you know, transition that over to sales. I'm able to kind of read people, understand their needs, problem solve. Uh, that's the main thing, problem solve. That's kind of today's like environment for sales. It's not really like the traditional car sales guy, cheesy lines, cheesy scripts. It's really problem solving. So understanding the person's, the prospect's problems and then creating a, a, a viable solution for them. Are you, uh, is it the same rules that you have to be a people, people, people person that people buy pe from people they like? I love that topic, man. People buy from people they like. People buy people. 
um, you know, there's a saying that he who educates the best and he, and and the 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 client whoever he likes the most, well, at the end of the day, they'll definitely get the sale. I mean, people's people is fifty percent of the road. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you need to know your shit. You need to know what you're talking about. You need to be knowledgeable. Yep. But if you're a people's person and the person likes you, you're the halfway. You know, the battle is halfway won. All right, my boy. Cut your line. Let's get it. Oh, one, into pieces two, like that? No, into the way you do it. Don't look at my shit and try to cut my pieces. Three, four, five, six. I was cutting a few lines. Seven and a half. During the Christmas eight, festivities, so. Oh, so you're, you're warmed up? Yeah, warmed up. I got nine and a half. Let's see what we got. Straight through the middle, like a rookie. And don't cut your fingers, brother. It's sharp enough. Because I almost cut my fingers. Nope. Ah, you got the big chunks. Okay, I know what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Let me crack this bottle because, man, he's supposed to represent the bottle and then crack the bottle, but then he left us hang it. Shit, I might have to let you crack this bottle because I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Listen, guys. Ooh, filtered. That shit's not going to work because this shit is delicious. Oh, my God. This is like a minty. Sure, little cinnamony, little minty. This is actually the key here. So when you go out to clubs, I um, fuck with these cuts, but when you could finesse cuts like this, you come to me because limes are very expensive. I think it was like three for a dollar, and I seen them once, like fucking back in the day, were like ten for a dollar. But uh, what were you saying about the thing? No, I was saying um, when you go out in clubs in Colombia, when you open up the bottle, they show you that this little this little thingy right here. They show you that they actually crank that. To make sure that it's a legit bottle. So okay. sometimes, you know, people can bootleg alcohol and bootleg liquor. So they make sure that you're getting the good shit or getting, you can you know, bootleg like Henny. Really? Yeah. I, uh, I think if like the room is too hot, the, the, the plastic, the metal or plastic, whatever, mm-hmm. fuck, the tinfoil. Yeah. The tinfoil that's on top of the Henny gets chubby, like aired out and you can slide it right out and you can literally unbottle it and slide it back in. And if it gets cold, it kind of compresses again. Oh, like no a brand new honey. So then you'd be like, oh, look, I'm opening it up for you. Or in the club, you can't see much, but you'll still see them opening up because you can slide it back on. Mm-hmm. You get a brand new honey. I've never done that before, though. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. I just drink a lot of honey. Oh, but, uh, I love me some honey. Yes, okay. sir. First shot of the night. Cheers. Are you ready for tonight? Salud. I'm ready. It'll be fun. Did you have any other questions before we start our segment? <sighs> yeah, my question for you oh, is... Another point. <laughs> um... No, I was gonna say I noticed you have that around your neck. What? I was wondering uh, that the so, the phone holder. Mm-hmm. I was wondering where you got that. This is from Hawaii. So, like I was saying, um, my boy made these pants for me at one of our shows here in the podcast. So I got the little logo that I have. I bought this from Hawaii, and then I'm supposed to be wearing my little turban from uh, Dubai because those are Dubai, Hawaii, and um, Thailand are my top three. And I'm still waiting to go to Thailand. Oh, my turban's right there. So I'm supposed to be wearing that, wearing this to represent the three places I've always wanted to be. And um, I'm missing one more spot. Those guys are impressive, huh? Those guys that sell those things, like, um, you know, in the streets, whether you go to Hawaii, Dominican Republic, Colombia, those guys are, you know, hustlers. Well, huh? it depends where you get it from because like they'll get it from street vendors in their neighborhood and then sell it for $10, $15 to Americans. They got to make their cuts, though. Yeah, I guess. I mean, if they have the vehicle to go to the resorts and, you know, come up with a profit. But, like, uh, I don't know if you're in country, but in our country, there's painters, like street painters. And there's real street painters that will sell their shit for, like, five bucks. And then they'll buy those street painters painting with their mark on it, go to the resort area and sell it for, like, 50 bucks. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> and they'll have their logo and their name on it. And, like, you'll never be able to find the painter. And you'll be like, yeah, yeah, I do this right here. I did this myself. <laughs> no, you didn't, my friend. It's uh, Is it like that in Colombia? Yes, it's, yeah, pretty uh, pretty similar, you know. But like I said, everyone has to make their cuts. So, you know, you get it from somebody, you sell it to the next person, you sell the service essentially, you're making it easier for the person to get it. But um, with, with regarding to that, it's, it's cool because, um, you know, as you're, st- let's say you're going to like a, a dock, you know, you're going to go on like a cruise ship or you're going to go to um, a boat ride. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're in the city. Oh, these are busing. Those are busing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but when you're in the city, let's it's like, you know, five bucks, 10 bucks. And as you get closer to the boat, mm-hmm. you know, you notice they start going up to 15, 20, oh, yeah. 25. Because, like, that's when you notice, like, shit, maybe I should get one. And at that point, supply and demand, and you're like, mm-hmm. fuck it, I got to get it. I, I'd rather Amazon. Amazon, guys, prepare, buy online before you go on vacation. Amazon it up. That's what you got to do. But these are busting, bro. 
and you just press record and just fucking go in the water and just do your thing. Nice and sealed. But I got this in Hawaii, and like you said, once you get to the water, I got it at the water. And the yeah. fucking, I took off my goggles, but the goggles were like $35 for some $10 fucking dollar store goggles. <laughs> but yeah, let's get another shot in. Yeah, let's do it, man. He's a bussin. Yeah, right. bad. I told you, man. It goes down smooth. Did you take your first line? I, I did, yeah. I got mine over here. So I'm telling you, it goes down smooth. I love this bottle because, like, you start drinking. We'll be half, done with half the bottle, maybe the full bottle. That's why I wanted to get the bigger one. I mean, this is 750. The other one was a liter, so it didn't make that much of a difference. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I know someone's going to talk shit that I didn't get the Sina <laughs> I didn't think it was you, but. You don't feel Not your, bad at all. You don't feel yourself getting lit off this. It sneaks up on you. Well, we got an hour of sneaking up, bro. Listen, my boy, we are in down in DMs. Down in DMs is any kind of topic of fan mentions, gossip or rumors. Ooh, gossip or rumors mentioned on social media. Anything I find on social media or any arguments I have on social media. And um, that's why I asked if you were a church person. Do you go to church? I used to when I was a kid. My parents are very religious, Catholic. I was born Catholic, but right now I do not go to church. Team Catholic. Is that what people say? Uh, I can't say that. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Catholic. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know if people say King confirmed. Catholic. I'm confirmed with the church, first communion. So I'm okay, all, I got all that stuff too. So I got all. You got all yeah. the requisites okay. done. You know? Cool, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Saint Paul's. <laughs> are, are you a, a cracker eater? The, Ooh, so you got to. You uh, don't got that one. I, I am. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, okay. that's confirmation. Okay, that's confirmation. Are you? A question for you. Are you uh, take it straight in the mouth or are you taking it in the hand? I thought you got to get blessed and then take it in here. You can't take it. Oh, you can get fed, right? You can get fed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm you, a you, fed guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feed me, daddy. Oh, I can't say that's church. I'm bad. I'm sorry. I'm a feed me guy. I'm Why? Is that? Sure. Did you learn that from? Um, I learned that, like. Um, that cultural thing? That if you, like, I guess, you know, if the priest gives it to you in your hand and then it goes through your mouth, it's gone through, like, a middleman. Okay. Whereas, like, if it goes directly into your mouth, you're getting it straight from the source. So, kind of like what we're talking about the Hawaii thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, middleman, you know. All right. That was that, and um, I don't go to church anyways. I, if I do, I don't. I used to go a little while ago by myself and shit, but I don't. I, won't, I don't go to the lines and stuff. I just there to show presence. Well, you got uh, you know you got to confess before you get it. So every time I go, I just feel too dirty. You know? Oh, yeah. okay. So I am doing it right then. Yeah, you are. You are. You're yeah. not supposed to do it unless you like confess like regularly once a month. Or what something. if you have nothing to confess about and you're a good boy? We all do. We all have something to confess. About. You think so? Yeah, we all do. Especially if you haven't gone for a while. Yeah. Okay. I've been a good boy for a while, honestly. I'm not gonna lie. But uh, and then do you drink, drink wine or whatever? The blood. So that's during like Christmas time. I feel like. No, I meant like the wine of the oh the, yeah, church. Yeah, the, the 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 blood of Christ. Um, they don't do it often though. But do you have that? I, don't I know have done is. it before. Yeah. Oh. I'm not sure exactly. What, I know it's just the the blood of Christ. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you gotta say about church? Um, I do. I want to go back at some point, but for now. It is what it is. So I like I like the way you say confess. You have to confess before you take the crackers and cheeses and 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 I feel I'm disrespecting you guys. I'm sorry. Before you get before the you take the board. yeah whatever the fuck it is. Uh, <laughs> um, what do, what do you think about uh you know people be like oh this shorty I'm not gonna say the b word this shorty was at the club last night shaking ass and you know went home with this man and that man and then she's at church on Sunday. Do you think confessing every single week is okay and, and taking the, the crackers from the Big Daddy is okay every single week, even though you know you're sinning? Um, as long as you're uh, resentful, as long as you... Um, How are you resentful if you do it every week? That's, and that's for the own person, I feel mm-hmm. like. I feel like each person is different. I mean, you know, some people uh, resent it and they won't do it for a while or ever, and some people resent it and then they're back at it a week later, but... If you truly in your heart like reg- like you know regret it and you want forgiveness and you seek forgiveness, then I think that's okay. I think uh, God is a different experience for everyone. Okay. So, yeah. That's good. You ready for the video? Yes, sir. I like the way you said that, man. Because um, this guy said it. Uh, actually, let's just watch it. Let's watch it, and then we can talk about it. Instead of allowing people to go, my heart's changing. I'm here every week, and I'm still smoking weed, fam. So sorry. But, but I showed up. I did drink a lot this weekend, but I showed back up. My heart is slowly changing. My actions aren't. That's a process. And it's a process God has never had an issue with. But we, the church, church can't deal with that. So I watched this the other day and I was like, wow. And I don't smoke weed, bro. You know, I don't do crazy things. That's why I think I I feel like I don't have to confess because I'm a really good guy. (laughs) But I guess you always have to confess and then, you know, you get the crackers and cheeses. Um, He said... 
that we are impatient with people. Like I said, if bitches are twerking. Oh, shit. I already said the B word early. Sorry, guys. If shorties are twerking, you know, at the club and effing dudes and going out and doing drugs, but they come and they show up every Sunday, they're not going to change the first weekend that they're there. And the beginning of this video, he's like, I used to do meth. Not him, but like, he's like, people be like, yeah, I used to do meth, but then I found God. But I'm still doing meth. So he's like, they're still doing a meth, which is oh, not oh, it's never okay to do meth, guys. But it's okay <laughs> because he showed up, right. and within the next few months, maybe he stops doing it. Maybe he gets, you know, um, what is, what is, what is it when you get under the water? Um, you know what I'm talking about? Under the water. Do we do that? Maybe that's Christians. Oh, oh, baptized. Oh, when you get baptized. So yes, some people yes. are not baptized and they find God. And then yep. at like 40 years old, they'll get baptized after doing drugs their whole life. Right. But they found God. Right. So what do you have to say about this man's little speech again? And uh, what do you think about people changing their lives? Yes. Yeah, so With I'm, time. Yes. Um, I, no, I totally, I totally agree. I mean, the thing is, God put us on this earth as free will creatures. I mean, God is not out there saying like, oh, you did this, you did that. Like, I'm going to punish you for that. You know, he really gives us the choice to to do what it is that, that you want to do. And, and eventually, um, through love that you'll find him, that that's kind of how I interpret the scripture and interpret God. So everyone has their own road. Everyone has their own path in finding him. So if you're out there clubbing, doing your thing, I mean, that's fine. Little by little, you know, if you are going to church, you're, you're finding him little by little. And then eventually, you know, um, you transition fully over or, or you keep a middle ground, but mm -hmm. uh, for everyone, you know, God is different. God speaks to everyone differently. So, um, you know, amen to that. Am I wrong for going to church to find myself a little good girl? No. No, you know our Spanish, um, our Latino parents are like, uh, la iglesia, mm -hmm. vas a encontrar una, una mujer. Some people, some people, you know what I'm saying? Some people, uh, even if they don't like it, like me, like I said, I, I, I go by myself. Like, yeah, my, even my parents are in a generation where they're like, they're not into the daily shit. Like yeah. my grandma used to like, every morning we wake up and every night before we go to bed, but my parents, after a while, was just like, oh, if you guys don't want to go, we don't have to go. Right. But then another uncle of mine, if I was to sleep over on Saturday, on Sunday, he wakes us all up in the morning to go to church. Right. So I was like, are you going to force your kids to go to church or are you going to force or let them choose to go to church? And I go to church more than my parents do and my brother, like my little semi-family. Yeah, yeah. Which I feel that's valid. Like yeah. I went to church once and the uncle I'm talking about. See me at church And was like Oh wow you're here And I went by myself yep. He's like yo We're about to go eat after And it was yes. my uncle My aunt And my other aunt He's like let's go out to eat I will say that man You definitely feel a different Like connection vibe With the people there Like Like you really feel like You're amongst brothers and sisters mm -hmm. That believe into something And when you believe In a higher power Or you have like You know You're in tune with your spirituality And you have this You know like You know You look at towards this higher power You definitely feel You, you feel it man And I I when somebody tells me they're religious, I respect it fully, and, and I commend them for that, honestly. Yeah. You know what I like, too? Because in church, you can fucking, I'm, I don't know why I'm swearing in the church conversation, but in church, there's a part where you're, like, you're supposed to like do your, like, your bendiciones to the people next to you and stuff and say hi. And, La paz. Yeah, so if you sit next to, not for me looking for a shorty, you know what I'm saying, but if you go sit next to like a grandma that's someone's mom and you know a couple grandparents and stuff, and your grandparents aren't there at the time or don't live in the area that you live in, you, you know, show them love, give them a hand, give them a kiss, or whatever it may be. Give them a hug. 100%. And it's dope because they give you, like, 15 seconds, you know, and everyone says hi to everyone surrounding each other. And but going back to the topic you said of, like, finding a, a shorty at the church, uh -huh. you know how many times that uh, if you can, you know, if you talk to the grandma that goes to church and you vibe with her, as soon as you she try to get the her granddaughter, granddaughter there, she'll be like, hey, mijo. El ba, she, el ba la iglesia. <laughs> yeah, right? You already got the yo, sentence you got early. The, you got the grandparents yo. approval because you go to church, bro. It's a wrap right there, man. Hundred <laughs> percent. I like it. I like it. Uh, we have family vacations, and like I said, uh, the older folks always puts like a program at church at like cool. seven in the morning, whatever. And then, like I said, my parents don't wake up for it. A lot of people don't wake up for it. And my mind says like, if I'm at church, I'm at, oh, if I'm on a family vacation. I'm already out of the country. I'm already doing whatever. I'm just going to wake up early and whoever's there. And I usually get brought into, it's my family. Yeah. But like smaller circles of other families, like, yeah, yeah, your parents aren't here. Come with us, you know? Connect so, on a different level, man. Even if people are family, you know what I'm saying? When you go to church, it's different. Connect on a different it's level. A, it's a different connection. Yeah, For 100%. Sure. Anything else you want to say about church and uh, people that go to church? Your family goes to church? I talked about my family. Did your, your family go to church? Yeah, my dad. My dad loved my grandparents. Um, they love church. Mm -hmm. They're at church every single weekend. 
um, kind of like your parents, you know, they, I mean, my parents got, got me through, you know, first communion confirmation. Yeah. And then we, we go to like the special events in church now, but as a frequently Sunday goer, mm-hmm. um, it's not a thing right now, but definitely something that I, I want to uh, look into in the future. Is St. Paul's on the Hill on, on Main Street? St. Paul's is, um, it's the one uh, near, near Main Street. It's the one near, um, I don't know how to explain it, honestly. But in between yeah, Pleasant Street. and Chandler on the Hill? No, not Pleasant and Chandler. Downtown. Up the hill on downtown? Yes, right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right there. Yeah, okay. But, oh, actually, funny story. Uh, that's where they filmed Blank Panther. Yeah, yeah, So uh, St. Paul's. There's a scene. If you watch Blank Panther, when he gets on the that motorcycle, side yeah. and he goes up onto, like, um, you know, up the stairs. That's a little like, walkway. That's the walkway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's St. Paul's right there. Pretty yeah. neat. Talk, that's fine. Pretty neat fact, yeah. I was watching that. It's just fire. All right, my boy. You ready for the next one? Yes, sir. It's like Guardiente's hitting, bro. Pour you a shot. Bother me, but I already poured myself like four like shots. Bother me, but that stuff. And act like it didn't bother me, but that stuff bothered me, and then it affected how I how I acted and how I treated people, and it's just this ongoing like cycle of like hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. What do you think about that? Uh, I seen a actually a podcast the other day where a woman's like. I find the biggest dickheads in the world allow them to fall in love with me. And because I already know they're assholes because my friends told me I break their hearts f- on purpose after a few months. Mm. So what, what do you guys say about hurt people, hurt people in whatever situation? Not to be relationships and stuff. Yeah. You know, if I backstab you as a friend, if your parents, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. What do you got? For I mean, that's an, that's an area that you talked about the that girl, like, again, you know, knowing the guy's an asshole and then breaking his heart anyways. I think that's I think that's fucked up. <laughs> He's fucked up for a reason because another girl did the same thing. So you're gonna make him more fucked up for the next generation of woman that he's about to fuck up. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. It's an endless cycle at that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we all meet people that are like hurt, right? Or like you're hurt yourself, like. Yeah. But, I mean, why would you hurt someone else? You know, mm-hmm. like, no, nah, I definitely think that hurt people hurting people. I mean, it's a thing that happens. It's an it's an unfortunate thing for sure. I don't think. Um, at what age do you think hurt people can hurt people? Like what age would someone be like? Because oh, what? what so what do you got? So so I think that it, it all comes down to uh, when you're conscious enough to to understand that you're hurt and that mm-hmm. you're purposely going to hurt someone else. Because if you're doing it uh, on accident, or you're doing it for the fact that you know you feel some type of way, and you're like, for example, when you're in elementary school and there's a bully, right? Yeah. Um, like you know, a bullied kid goes and like bullies kids at the school. It's probably because he has a troubled li- lifestyle mm-hmm. or a troubled child, you know, situation at home and yeah. stuff. Which you know he's doing the wrong thing, but can you blame him? Really, you can't really because like you know he's dealing with things at home, yeah, yeah. so he's not doing it purposely. He's just like reacting. So. When it comes down to you being able to consciously know, like, okay, I'm hurt and I'm going to go purposely hurt someone else, that's when I think that that's the age. So I feel like the, there's not really like an age, maybe a spectrum between maybe like 13 to eight, 13 to and beyond, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think is when you can, when you can hurt, hurt people can hurt people purposefully. So you, you mentioned bullies and what the, was going on at home. I'm going to tell you, bro, I could have been the biggest dick. I'm talking about the biggest dick. I'm talking about like the biggest eggplant in the world, bro. If I really wanted to, I could have been the biggest asshole. Because I'm, like I said, my family, I grew up with a hundred, like almost like 30, 40 cousins. Wow. Our family vacations are a hundred plus. Wow. So it'd be like great uncles and then um, the cousins are my dad's brothers and sisters and cousins. And then our cousins and everybody. We go a hundred deep to all our vacations. Bro, I'm telling you, when you're like 12, 15, and you got cousins that are 18, 19. They're like, oh, you get no pussy. You're ugly. You fat. Uh, uh. I've been bullied from day one where people don't experience that until they get into middle school and high school. Yep. And I took that, all that shit in, bro. There's the one point where I used to hate my brother, bro. I was like, fuck you, man. I hate you. You're not my brother no more. Bullied, bro. Down, bro. Cousins balls on my face while I'm sleeping because I was a younger cousin. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And I took all that shit into it. And I was like, yo, I'm not going to allow... Any of these little brothers that I think who are little brothers to me deal with that. Ever have to go through that ever again. You know what I'm saying? That's the route I took. Yeah. But what I've been through, I could have been like, fuck that. And I could have kept that same energy and fucked anybody else up and be like, yo, fuck you little piece of shit. But I didn't do that. I was like, yo, I just took a positive route and I was like, fuck it. 
So you rose up to the occasion, man. It always takes that one person um, to kind of change the narrative, yeah. right? So it, like, just like it takes that one person to change, like, you know, um, your family's lifestyle to creating generational wealth or other things like that. But, you know, same thing, man. Like, I feel like in Latino communities, I feel like the older cousins definitely, uh, you know, they have this uh, mentality yeah. of, like, toughen you up mm -hmm. and, and do stuff, right? Dude, I dealt with the same thing. My yeah. cousin used to slap me around, bully me, like, punch me, do things, right? And just like you, man, like, it really taught me, like, I don't really want other people to feel this way mm -hmm. or I'm not going to treat others this way. I'm going to use that, embrace it, be a better man, and, like, be kind to the world. So yeah. I, I feel you on that, man, 100%. Well, we have a mutual friend that mentioned – his roommate's name. And I was like, yeah, I remember him. That's a cool kid. He was a weirdo. Yeah. But I was like, yeah, he was a cool kid. He's like, how do you know that name? I'm like, bro, because I used to fuck with everybody, but I didn't care. Mm -hmm. Now, I have the dickhead mentality. Mm -hmm. Like, if you come at me, I will destroy your life. <laughs> yeah. So, I was a bully. Like, I'm not going to admit that I wasn't a bully. But the reason I said that is because someone came up to me the other day and was like, yo, this is a popular kid from my school who's on social media crying about how he used to get bullied when he was the bully of everybody else. In reality, I was a really nice guy and I was a popular kid in school. Mm -hmm. But there was people that fucking tempted me. And I, I, bro, like, I would make I would make people cry. Yeah, yeah. I could make people cry if you put me to that test. 100%. You know what I'm saying? But that's because they're another fucking asshole. Yeah. It's not because I'm a bully. It's an asshole on asshole. You know what I'm saying? 100%. But everybody else, I'm just like, yo, just, I'm just chilling, bro. Like, I don't know who you think I am or what you think I am. I'm just one of you guys. Well, that's, you know what the, saying? that's the thing, man. When you're a high value man, um, we're going to talk about that later. But. Yeah, when you're a high value man, man, like, you should have an ego. Like, when mm -hmm. you know you got it, you got it. Like, yeah. you should, like, you know, you know, live that lifestyle, right? And if somebody comes and like, you know, challenges it, challenges you or like, you know, mm -hmm. tries to come at you, like you got to reply, you got a response, man. You got to reply. Yeah. Like you can't just kind of stay, stay shut down, you know? So I feel you for that. I mean, definitely high school, you definitely had uh, some great moments, man. I remember I was great below you and you put on some great events for, for the school. I'll give that to you, man. I was thinking about it before I came on this podcast today. I was thinking about kind of rewinding in my head, mm -hmm. all the great moments that, that Pena had in, in high school and honestly like putting on the bus trips. Uh, I pulled up a picture earlier and I showed you of like there. the picture of us at the state championship game mm -hmm. in high school. Um, all these things that really the school, like, you know, in the moment you're a kid, you don't really like un understand it. You're kind of like, all right, this is happening, whatever. But like, I thought it was normal, bro. Yeah. Like, that's not normal. What we did. No, it's not yeah. like now looking back on it, you know, 25 years old, looking at something in high school. I'm like for somebody to really go out of their way and yeah. like, create that whole system the structure and, and make it so people can go to this game like yeah that is that is like an entrepreneur like business guy in the in, in the making man like yeah. i gotta commend you for that for real well for that's shit, how i tell you bro since but I'm, like i'm saying if i had social media bro now and we were still in high school i would have been chilling i would have been 21 millionaire type vibe i would have been one of those kids but uh it's all good it's everyone all has good. a different journey and um your day's yeah. coming 100 percent 100 percent but again, you don't got to go to school to make six figures. You don't. You you don't, honestly. Um, as long as you have the work ethic. And a lot of people see, this is a topic that I've heard uh, recently. It's like people say you got to have the motivation. Yes, you got to have the motivation. Everyone wakes up one day and they're like, dude, I got to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. um, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do this. But and then two days it. later, it, it dies out. Yep. And so it's not motivation. It's discipline. Trust me, when you wake up, in the, when I wake up at like 6, 7 a.m. to go to, uh, you know, go to work, go to an appointment or go to the gym. Let's say I don't have an appointment that day and I'm going to the gym doing other things like, do I want to do that? Hell no. Like, you know, no one wants to do that. Right. But I understand that I'm working towards a future goal. And at the same time, like I'm disciplined. So I do it because I understand what my future life looks like. So that's a lot of things that people need to understand. You know, it's not like you're you're living in, in a fantasy or you're living in happiness all the time. Like it, it, you got to have discipline to, to get to your goals. I love that you said that because, bro, the gym line, like parking wise, is down the street. And I already know, like, from videos that people are like, oh, it's the New Year's resolution. Everyone signed up for the gym and making the gym membership. So now I have to wait like a whole nother month for the fucking. I, I'm still going, but like, I have to wait a whole nother month for people to like relax and get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Because it doesn't work. What? And I haven't talked to anybody about New Year's resolution. What, did you have a New Year's resolution? Are you changing anything about you or whatever? Yeah. So um, I know a lot of people say, like, oh, um, you know, a lot of people are, are like, I was talking to my friend the other day and I told him, well, what are your new year's resolutions? Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, well, you know, I don't believe in that. Like, I believe you should just like, you know, just be it or do things like for, for doing it. I'm like, yeah, yes. one day you wake up and you have a resolution. It doesn't have to be a new year's one, but yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's exactly what I said to him. And, 
And yeah, my new resolution um, this year is uh, I want to get in the gym at least three to four times a week. Okay. Um, if I'm not in the gym, I want to play soccer. Soccer is kind of like my activity that I do during the week to, you know, de-stress and, and stay active. Um, and, you know, I want to, um, you know, show up to work every day and, and, and grind and, and make sure I'm continuously making those, you know, those six-figure amounts and more. A lot of times, like, you know, we're, uh, like, for example, John, la- last year when I made my first, um, you know, my first amount, I really thought that I was rich. I was like, man, I'm fucking rich. I'm about Your to retire. first six figures? My first six figures. I was mm-hmm. like, I'm about to retire. I'm done. I'm getting my car, my house, and, and that's, that's it. You know, I'm set for life. Well, because, open your eyes. Uh, the thing is, um, this past year, the relationships and the people I've met, you know, um, have really changed my mindset. It, it, you know, a lot of times, like, with the people we grew up with, we stay with them for a while, and mm-hmm. that's kind of the nest where we feel comfortable in. A lot of times that, you know, that that's, it's cool because they're, you know, you're your friends and everything's great, but sometimes you do got to branch out, talk to other people and network. And you realize that, wow, like there's a whole other like lifestyle and world out there. And are you seeing yourself distancing yourself from those old friends? They could, old, old friends are always going to be there around, you know what I'm saying? But have you seen yourself like find new group of friends that, you know, are related to more what, what you want to do and what you're doing? So I feel like, um, don't get me wrong here. I'm a true believer in that the guys you grew up with, the friends you have from you know childhood, if you, if you manage to be friends with them for a while, never leave them behind because mm-hmm. those guys are real. Never leave them behind. Those guys are real. What I'm saying is that sometimes the time you spend with them might decrease mm-hmm. because you're out there doing other things, networking, yeah. meeting people and stuff. But in terms of friendships, uh, you'll never meet friendships like that. Thank God. Um, you know what I mean? So I don't want to get I don't want to get my point uh, wrong. Uh, definitely the guys you grew up with are real. But as you go up and, and, and you know, and, and you keep growing, the, the time you spend with them will, will decrease. But the reason I ask you that is because people like Gary V and I love Gary V, no disrespect to Gary V, but he'd be <laughs> like, drop all your loser friends. And in reality, I'm like, you know, let's say I don't smoke weed. Yep. But I'm stressed out six months down the line and I need a friend to smoke weed with. Am I going to ha- have my friend that is motivating me and growing with me or should I go on the side silently smoke a little bit of weed no one knows and then I come back to motivation you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. if I want to fucking get drunk and slap some titties at the the strip club am I going to go to your my friend that you know likes to go to strip club every single night or am I going to tell my motivational friend that I do strip clubs and yeah. and do this, this and that you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah and I always said bro like don't drop your loser friends, bro. Like it, you have friends, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can bring them around, whatever, not in every situation, but if they're relatable to just chilling at a pool or whatever and talking shit and whatever the vibe is. But if you're in a business meeting and your business event, clearly you're going to bring your business friends. hundred percent. And, and ultimately the goal is that you elevate yourself and hopefully the guys around you, you know, quote unquote, loser friends. Mm-hmm. We're not, we're, I'm not saying they're losers in the moment, but you know, quote unquote, like you, grow yourself and you, you elevate your game and you bring them with you. Now, yeah. if they don't want to come with or they, you that's know, when you start they, dropping them. That's about, when, yeah. that's when, you know, Oh, when you come home, you see them, at, you see them on Thanksgiving and, 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 and Christmas. Exactly. But what can you do if they don't want to come up and make some extra money? If you're working a nine to five and you can work the same nine to five anywhere in the world. And let's say me and you are like, yo, we're going to do this and that. And we're going to go to Cali. We're going to get an apartment and make a life for ourselves. And our one year lease ends And we're like yo Anybody from the city of Worcester Wants to come out to Cali We're trying to get a 3-4 bedroom apartment Have the boys there Make bread Mm. Someone with a Mm. 9-to-5 Is willing to come And learn what we're doing You're making 200k I'm making 300k a year Whatever the the situation may be And he's making 50k a year Mm -hmm. He goes grabs his same 9-to-5 And then tries to learn what we're doing So he could stay in the same apartment Mm -hmm. And Come up, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's your environment. Not, you don't find people like that all the time. You don't. You know, a lot of people aren't willing to to, to take that leap of faith, you know, yeah. and it sucks. But I'm, I'm telling you, like, it's out there. I mean, don't think, like, you know, a lot of times, like, my mentality when I was growing up was, like, you know, I'd see these kids that were, um, you know, let's say they were, had good things. They had luxuries, were making money, doing this. Mm-hmm. And I was always like, oh, they got connections or, oh, they got, you know, their parents like pay for their yeah, stuff yeah. or do they do that's that. That's a terrible mentality to be in because, um, you know, some it's not true. Like if you really work hard and you get out there and you get after it, man, you you can do it. Like you really can. Like I've seen it firsthand. Like, you can do it. But I tell the story all the time. I was playing ball with friends of my brother's generation and my brother drives by in my mom's car. B sent me. I'm like, hey, my brother. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yo, look. Wow. Look at Juan P. He's growing up. He's making money. He's in the brand new 2015. It was 2015 or 2014. That's not 2015 Lexus. 
And in my mind, I knew my mom was driving the car. But what they see, they're like, oh, yeah, man, he 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 did his thing, man. He's out there. Why are you looking at what the man's driving, what the man's posting, what they're doing, and not worrying about what you're doing, bro? Why, why don't you have the mentality that you can be there? Exactly. And a lot of people, like we were talking about earlier that you wanted to talk about, here we don't. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you know, a lot of times uh, you got to blame your environment for that, you know? A lot of times that's the environment we grew up in. Um, like, I'll be honest with you guys. I mean, I'm... I'm you know, in the community I grew up in, like, if if you made a hundred grand, like, you were you were fucking you were the goat. Mm-hmm. Like, as soon as you made hundred grand, you were the goat. What's you know? the cap in the community that you, you're in right now? Yeah, uh, um, are you talking about the one that I'm like currently currently? Trying, yeah, yeah. Can they make? Can you make three hundred, four hundred, five hundred? Oh man, dude, like the people I, like I talk to now, like na- nowadays, you know, over in like the Hopkinton area, mm-hmm. Metro Boston area, like to, over towards like is it east. the same business? Same business, okay. same business, same kind of like-minded okay. groups. Like, I'm part of some networking groups. Exactly. And I talk to those guys, and they're like, yeah, man, like, you know, I'm striving to make 250 300 this year. And I'm like, fuck, like, wow. Like, that for me, I was like, dude, like, are you an NFL player? Like, so, you, so you know, and the they're giving you above average where you're at right now, and yes. you're talking to people that, like, I'm struggling to make 250 300 mm-hmm. Cause they know people are making 500, 600, 700 type shit. Right? That's what I'm saying. There's okay. always a level up. Mm-hmm. There's always a level up. So yeah. in the moment, you know, like when you, you, you let's say you, you, you know, you, you got a job you're making 50, 60, you're like, damn, I'm doing pretty good for myself. Mm-hmm. And then you finally strive up and you make those six figures and you're like, damn, now I'm doing fucking amazing. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I was. And then you start talking to these like-minded individuals, like these people. And then they're like, yeah, man, like, you know, my goal this year is 250, 300. And then you just like, you reevaluate your whole thing and you're like, damn, like this dude, like the thing is these guys are, so I'm part of a networking group, right? It's called the BNI. BNI is the biggest networking group in, in the United States of America. Okay. And I, and it's all like, you know, different towns have their own chapters. I'm actually part of the first chapter that's only Spanish. So it's a Spanish based well, chapter. Latino community? Latino community, exactly. But it's all guys that are like us, you know, Latino, uh, American, you know. It's, are they older? Are they younger? What do they, what they so, look like? So that's where I'm getting at. Yeah. So there are a lot of them are, uh, you know, late twenties, early thirties. Okay, not bad. And you know, a lot of you know, you're getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there exactly. Turn 26 in two months, mm-hmm. so I'm getting there. Uh, oh, shout out, happy birthday to Jonathan. Yeah, I keep one. forgetting that. It is my birthday, guys. Happy birthday. So, ah. <laughs> so these these groups, right? I'm talking to these guys, late 20s, early 30s, and and the part of the group is that you're supposed to do like one on ones via Zoom, so you can kind of communicate, bounce ideas off each other. And I'm talking to this guy, and I'm like, yeah, he's like, yo, I'm 30. You know, my goal this year is, uh, you know, last year I made like 220. I'm trying to make 250 this year. I'm like. Like, damn, bro. Like, you know, in my mind, I was like, damn, I'm doing good. And, you know, let's say like a couple, like a year ago, I was making a hundred. I'm like, damn, I'm doing good for myself. And here I got this guy that's like three or four years older than me. And no, no excuses in terms of like, oh, he got connections. He got generational mm-hmm. wealth. His parents came just like mine and yours. Yep. Came from abroad countries. His parents are actually from Guatemala. Nice. Came from Guatemala. He was born here, grew up in the high school system. And now he's making two, 250. He's going to try to make 250K. If that guy can do it, and other people in, in in these towns that I'm speaking with can make it because they're motivated, why can't why can't you guys listening? Why can't I make that? Why can't you make? Why can't all of us make it? And we can. It's just the mindset we got to be in. Is your business location vibes wise? Like, yeah. If you're in Worcester, you're not gonna make more than two fifty. But if you're in Boston, you could make five hundred k. So definitely, environment is a thing. Mm-hmm. I just feel like um, you know, it's your env- it's your environment. Um, in terms of like what jobs are available where, I mean, I definitely think Metro Boston area is definitely, um, there's more opportunity, but not what about o- United States in general. Oh, hundred percent. I'm mean, saying like you said Metro Boston, but I'm saying what about like New York or like yeah. Miami or like, yes. does that make more money in the same category that you guys are in or no? Um, so in terms of like, um, the industry that I'm in, uh, Massachusetts, yeah, is where big. You are in, yeah. Massachusetts is big and Florida, I would say is the second biggest, okay. uh, biggest industry. So you're in Florida and you're in construction sales. That's why I, I honestly, I, I, back in the day, I thought about like going to Florida for vacations in the summer yeah. and working for a company there just to kind of gain experience, see the industry there. It never happened, unfortunately, but, um, but that was something I always wanted to do. Go out there and like work there for a couple months. Cause like the industry out there, I heard is crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy money out there. That's fine. You ready for the next segment? Yes, sir. Oh wait, not the next segment. I'm sorry. This is the last part. Listen, do you know who this is? Or who, what this photo represents? Or do you know the team that we're talking about right now? Yes, sir. I was watching the game live. He was watching the game live. This is the Buffalo Bills post where they said, do not post anything else but this photo. So it's the only photo that we're going to represent what we're doing right now. And I use this photo because my friend has a soldier, a soldier, goddamn, a shoulder injury that you just mentioned. Yeah. So 
I want to get into more. Uh, do you want to talk about, since you were watching live, who this player is and a little bit more information about the Bills? Yeah, so DeMar. Um, DeMar, you know, got... got like, it's crazy what happened to him, honestly. Like, I've seen cardiac arrests happen before, like mm-hmm. in soccer. Um, you know, Erickson, Christian Erickson actually had a cardiac arrest like a couple of years ago at the Euros, and that was pretty scary. But this was like the first time I've seen something related to this in football. Yeah. And the thing was, it was based on impact. Like he got hit in the heart at an exact moment where like he got hit or did he tackle somebody? I thought he tackled somebody. Oh, that's a good, see, yeah, that's a good question. I, I heard know. he tackled somebody and then he, he got up and then dropped. He did drop, but um, he had an impact to the chest. Okay. So whether he initiated it or yeah, somebody yeah. hit him in the chest. Whatever it is. Yep. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, the, His heart went into cardiac arrest, and, and, and that's that's pretty scary, man. Um, I mean, good. You know, thank God he, he's good now. He, he's safe. And good thing about it is that, I don't know if you heard, but in his contract, he actually had a clause that if he entered the injured reserve or he was injured during the season, he wouldn't get paid. Mm -hmm. And the bills actually waived that and said, you know what? Like, forget that. Like let's, would they talk to the NFL committee and they got it waived and they paid him. But you said this is is different. This is, this is like never happened before. Never happened. Okay. okay, okay. Like uh, I talked to my friend, respect to them. Yeah. My friend that, uh, he plays, he played football in high school. He works for me right now. He said that after seeing this, his kids might not play football. Yeah. And um, you never know what happens, bro. Football is re- crazy. <laughs> it's insane, man. Huh. It's contact insane. sport is not. It's not valid. It's no joke. But what I want to mention was apparently because they uh, postponed this game, they were one game down, and they had to win the next game, which they did off two fucking kickoffs apparently, and they went crazy. Uh, that was the main thing with the Skip Bayless thing. You know what I'm saying? I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. So I want to talk to you about this situation. Yep, injury. Whatever the injury may be, and you watching your brothers, you know what I'm saying, strive to win that next game so you can get into what do they get into? The championship? What what is So it? the Bills, uh, if they won this the game finals, or, playoffs, or, or they won the Pats if they won this game and they won the Pats game, yeah, they were fighting for the first place in the division, division. which is very important because um, if you get first place in the division, you get a bye. Yeah. And, and the way football rest. yeah, you get to rest. So the way football is structured now is that um, it's, it used to be first and second get a bye. Now it's just first in, in the in the conference. So the Bills were fighting to be first in the conference. Mm-hmm. Um, so these were pretty important games. Very important. Very important. So I want to talk to you about, since you got your little soldier. Why do we keep saying soldier? Soldier. Like, I'm telling you, bro. Yo, I'm telling you, look, we're, almost, we're less than halfway through the bottle. And I'm telling you, man, these things sneak up on you. Believe it or not, like you take them because they don't hit as much, <laughs> but little, little, they they creep up on you, man. I'm telling you. Since you got your little shoulder injury, there you go. I want to talk about like I don't think you, I don't know if you went to depression or anything. I want to talk about more depression vibes. He's watching his team for the rest of the season through a camera lens, phone, or TV. Have you ever been through a depressed area? I know you play soccer back in high school, right? Yeah. Was that your main sport? High school, college. I played in college. Oh, in college. Yeah, That's your, so that is your main college. sport then. Yeah. Okay, so have you ever had an injury where you're like, damn, I just missed a championship game with my boys. I just got this injury. It's not your fault, but it happened. Have you ever had that situation? Yeah. <clears throat> it's, it's funny you mention it. So I still play, um, you know, I feel like everyone has their, uh, I don't want to say guilty pleasure or like um, an extracurricular curricular activity mm-hmm. that they do outside of their life. And soccer has been my, soccer is like a lifestyle. yeah. So I'm part of this futsal league here in uh, in Worcester, and it's pretty, it's really competitive. And we were in the semifinals, and you know I'm, I'm I don't know I'm an important part of the team, and I don't know what it was, man. That day, like I was just feeling like like queasy, like kind of um, nauseous, headaches, and like I couldn't play. And so I told the guys, you know, I'm sorry I can't play this and that, and you know, obviously they were devastated, but sat in the bleachers, watched the guys play, and like it was it was sad. Did it, they it, lose? It's sad. They lost. Yeah. It was sad. It's not like a happy ending story. No, it was sad. They lost. Are you in the league that does the out. Caribbean or whatever, like cultural, uh, like championships here in the city, or what is it that you're talking about? So, um, so it's a league uh, over at, at uh, they play in elementary school. It's an indoor league. Man, it's insane. Oh, okay, it's insane. Man. So, just a program on the side. Uh, yeah, yeah, something on the side. Gigs, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's just some gigs. But, All right, cool. But dude, <laughs> no one takes soccer more serious than like South American and Central American mm-hmm. men. Man, they take that shit yeah. like fucking. No, that's fine. That's fine. Heart. Like people but are you playing. sat on the sideline and then the game lines, lost. Yeah, yeah. Regardless if you impacted or they couldn't impact it, you watched them lose on an injury or whatever. You didn't feel good. She was sad, man. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. How do you feel about letting your boys down and soccer and football? And I say for soccer and football because you niggas have like thirty people on the on the squad type shit. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's tough, man. It's tough. You never want to let your boys down, and 
in sports and life and anything, right? You want to always, uh, I mean, it, it com- when it comes to a team, they're like your brothers, right? Mm-hmm. So you let them down. It's kind of like, it's like letting your brothers down. It but sucks, man. At this level, let's say you can never play football again. Oof. They are your brothers, but then they, they still need to get paid and you're just, you know, you got to, you, after a couple of years, maybe they, you know, throw in some, you know, medical bills. Maybe they, you know, throw you some rent, but like three, four or five years down the line, if you're off it and you're not in the game, you're not back. You're done. You're just a regular, regular, go get a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> so how do you feel about at this level where these guys still need to make a, a making and they could get traded any day and have to get another apartment next month? Because I know someone on in the NFL that just got traded without being told and has to be changed to another state. You know what I'm saying? So, any questions on that? Any comments on that? Before the next, if I'm the Mar, if I'm the if I'm the Mar, I completely understand. I understand my boys need to eat, and they need to make a living. Yeah. So, and I know I'm out. At the end of the day, I'm not holding anyone back. Yeah, yeah. you know. So they so gotta do what that. they gotta do. So I gotta tell them like, yo, do your thing. One hondo. Ready for the next segment, sir? Any other questions Man, on that topic? We're killing, killing this bottle. I don't know about you, but I took like five, six shots back to back, back, back. I've seen you, bro. Every time you go, I, I oh, okay, yeah. okay. I don't be watching the camera. Out. The camera will it will reveal the secrets at the end. We'll see what the camera says. <laughs> Listen, we're in the doggy down segment talking about relations of the week and who flopped, explaining the story and feeding my opinion or asking my guest about their opinion what they would do in this situation. Have you ever been in a toxic relationship? Yes. <laughs> How toxic was your relationship? Talk to me about it. Very toxic. Very toxic. Give me, give me some yeah. examples. Yeah, what you got? In trouble for this. See, no names, no ad names. You, you were smart, man. That's why you got the aguardiente going. Yeah, you, you said straight. I, I need this one. I got, I got the aguardiente. Yo, he's like, yeah, man. Do say or aguardiente. I said, yo, the do say podcast already happened. He said, yeah, get the aguardiente and limes only. Yep, yep, yep. My little scare was someone just slapping my belly as hard as possible in front of my family at a family function. My family function. Like actual angry, like angry said and just swung, but she, she hit my belly, but she slapped the shit out of me, and everyone laughed. I thought it was a joke because she was drunk, she was passed out drunk, and thought it was a joke. But in reality, she was fucking mad about something, mm. slapped the shit out of me, just ended up hitting my belly, and I was like, yeah, you know, I think it's time to go. <laughs> and I walked out, I was like, yeah, let's go home, blah, blah blah. I dropped her. I mean, had a really long night to get her out of the fucking car. And then the next day I went back to the family function During the day So it was like cousins sleeping over and shit And I was mm-hmm. sitting around with my cousins and stuff And I was like yeah you guys know the slap from last night I, I think I should leave the shorty And they're like nah man Like she was just drunk Like give her another chance <laughs> I was like no Like this is this is like me Like my mind telling me I should not be with this woman Cause you know She did ass slap me It yep. wasn't in the face cause she was lit She just swung when she woke up And you know So I was like I think I should leave this girl. And they're like, nah, man, it's okay, man. I'll give her another chance. She she didn't mean it. But they didn't know that she was serious. Yeah. So what happened was we're at a family function. My cousin dates a white girl. And I went to go chill with the white girl and like post a selfie and she was with a friend, whatever, and we we're vibing, everyone's vibing. And then my other cousin pointed out, like, look at John, bro, over there with the white girls, not chilling with the cousins, da da da. And she was like, Oh, really? So she thought she took it serious. My cousin thought it was funny. All my other cousins laughed. And then when I went back to the table, she left the table and then she went to the side and just like relaxed and took a deep breath and kind of took a nap type vibe. So when I came over, like, oh, you okay? Blah, blah. And that's when she came up and slapped the shit out of me because she woke up drunk and was like, yeah, this is the nigga. Bow! And just slapped the shit out of me. And my cousin's like, ah, yeah, whatever. I was like, funny yeah, joke, that's man. funny, guys. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> and I left. And I had that combo. Did she swing for the? She swung, bro. She for the faces. She and stuff? could have knocked me out. Tight swing, bro. Like straight, like three hundred, fucking speed, bro. Like she, she was slapping coming? shot me. No, I got slapped the shot. Like I'm talking about, like her laying down like a little bench, and she just woke up and said, and slapped the shot at me. In the way that I'm standing up, and my belly titty vibes is like all here. So she just hit me the like hit me mad hard. Like everyone heard it. And they thought it was funny. And, ah, over, ah, everyone's ah. Laughing. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, yeah, guys, I right, see you guys tomorrow. And I dipped. Jesus, bro. So I learned my lesson. And then my cousin's like, nah, give him a chance. Give him another chance. It's okay, guys. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gave her another chance. And it was not okay. That's because I'm single. That's the reason it's not okay. Don't but, ignore uh, the red flags, man. Yeah. Don't ignore them. So did someone tell you to give her another chance? Or you're a dumbass just give her another chance? Yeah, it was just me, bro. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we're not on the same. We're not on the same. Uh, level. No, 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 no. Yeah. It was myself. Oh. There's other stories too, but we'll save yeah. it for a different. Yeah, day. we'll save it for after. Okay. After, after. All right. So let's get into the toxic relationships, my boy. Let's get it. The reason I asked that is, what are you pointing? No, no. I was like that. I'm not connected. No, no. I was like, I was saying, you ever driven through uh, West Boston? That kind of looked like the like that little the ho- beach home. Yeah, the home on the beach. So we're gonna get deep into this. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. I'm feeling it now. So Shorty almost vroom, Dude, off the honestly, road. Honestly, uh, John, I'm not lying to you. I thought it was. I thought it was dying. Yeah. I thought it was dead, bro. Like I was like, I don't play around when it comes to driving. This is. I was like, this is it, man. This mm-hmm. is it, like. My my life flashed before my eyes, bro. If there would have been any cars on the road, like it would have been done, dude. Yeah. I literally pulled over. Got a highway car. or side street? highway, highway, okay, okay. highway. I mass pike, bro. Yeah. So I had to like pull over and like walk and like just like clear my mind, bro. I literally had no. I I didn't I didn't comprehend what had happened mm-hmm. until I like pulled over and like walked. Yeah. Dude, this shit was scary. There we go, right there. Have you seen this? Do you know what this is? Do you so, know who they are? So I'm a big, uh, like I said, I love podcasts, love Twitter. I'm always trying to keep up with like mm-hmm. what's out there. So I'm familiar with Blueface and like Christine. They're like they're a couple, right? But Christian, Christian. But I'm not exactly sure. Like you know, I, I'm gonna have to rely on you for this one, man. Okay. I'm not exactly sure like what's going on or kind of. Want to replay it real quick? And I'll tell you who that is. I mean, he was about to swing. I know who Blueface is. Okay. I know Christian's his girl. She got, she got like mad tattoos from him, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got. Yeah, you got to cut the new job. Yeah, I got that. Got that. Cut the new job. So let me play the video one more time while you're cutting. Please, please. There we go, right there. So the reason my man is running and going to snuff somebody. It's because he already got snuffed earlier by Christian Rock's father. So dad, when I ask you, have you been in a toxic relationship? Have you been in toxic situations? My question to you right now while you're cutting your thick ass. Yeah, do your thing. I'll wait a little bit. Don't cut your fingers, my boy. Good. So he's running to... Knock out her father, no leaving way. him leaking. So my question to you is, when I said, have you been in toxic relationships, how deep in the toxicity do you have to be where you want to knock the fuck out of someone's father where you're like, yo, let me leave this shorty. You know what I'm saying? What At what point, since now you said that was in your 20s, yeah. so nowadays, what will stop you from dating a woman that's toxic, what is toxic to you in a woman, bro? That's not honestly punching <laughs> punching your girl's dad. That's next level, bro. <laughs> that's like out of this world for me. I mean, um, I mean, I think right now uh, the relationship I'm in, I think the parents are like dope, and I feel like that's a, an important uh, aspect when you would date someone, mm-hmm. making sure that their parents are cool with you and making sure that, you know. They're good people and they like you and making making them like you. You know, it's not easy at first, but after you get to know them and they they get to know you and you show your true self, they have no reason to like you. I mean, you're treating the daughter well. You're a good person. Like, why wouldn't they like you, right? But to get to the point where like you're trying to like fight someone's like your girl's dad, bro, that's that's insane. That's so, that's crazy to me, bro. So since you're not familiar, this is a whole TV show now. No way. So so they've been toxic for a while. But they're like, them, let's make this a TV show. So now it's like a little reality TV. Okay. And this is the first time he met her family. After cheating on her, after oh. her beating him up, after her giving a black eye, after him calling girls at night and, and doing whatever the fuck he's doing. He's never met their family. Wow. And on TV... With cameras, yeah. he's like, "Yeah, I'm down to meet your family. I'm trying. I'm down to go to Baltimore, where you're from, and 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 you know, show love to your family." Shows up, everyone's cool at a moment. After like ten minutes, saying hi, 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 mom pops is like, "Yo, you need to treat my daughter right. You need to treat my daughter right." Uh, cousins are like, "Yeah, you're you're disrespecting my cousin. You disrespect my cousin." Like, yo, yo, when I'm talking about like, if you were to watch this, like the five minute span that this happened, literally get out of the car. Actually, before that. They didn't want to link up with them mm-hmm. like the day before 
they were there the whole weekend. The day before, someone linked up with them and then ran away because the, all the cousins and stuff was like, yo, get the fuck out of that car. Like, we're going to meet them tomorrow. You're, you're going to see what happens tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. So when they meet up tomorrow, in the, in the span of like five minutes, everyone's swinging. <laughs> Pops is like, yo, you're going to disrespect my daughter like that? You're going to punch my daughter? But the thing is, I don't know if you know about Christian Rock. Stole his car, broke into his house. Wrote I Heart Christian on his wall with blood. You know what I'm saying? She went crazy. She went the extra level. Jesus, bro. So they have a toxic relationship. And they're saying that she's the angel and he, and she doesn't do anything wrong. Which ended up in a whole brawl and what happened. So I'm asking you. You already told me what your toxic level is. Where do you stop dating a crazy B word in whatever situation? Dude, anything. anything all right. If her, if it gets to the point where like me and her dad are about are squaring up and about to like fight each other, bro, it's over. Yeah, hundred percent, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, I understand like getting into an argument, maybe disagreeing on something, maybe getting a little awkward. I understand all that, but if it gets to the point where like you're about to swing on each other, dude, like what? It, it, that's, it's over, bro. Like, what, what do you mean? Like, you're, you're like, it's over. Or another trait that I don't like in females, bro. A trait I hate. Is if they're the like the 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 hood girls that are like trying to make you fight for them, mm-hmm. dude. I hate that. I hate that shit too. I hate that, bro. If they're the type that get into issues, problems, and they're like, "Oh, my man's is gonna fuck you up," dude. I hate that, bro. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that at all. I feel like that's your own. I I in my in my eyes, that's your own fight. That's your own war. Hopefully, men don't hit women. If they hit women, then then it's our fight. But don't don't ever put like yo my man will fuck you up type energy into anybody because I'm not I'm not doing that for anybody. And how many times did you see that in middle school, high school? Always, it's always like that, and they always get beat up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, they're toxic as fuck, bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, what the girl I was telling you about when she gets drunk, she's a she was a little bit more abusive. Yep. And I was scared in my mind because I was I'm a really calm person. Yeah. When she got drunk and she didn't like what she seen and I had to drive her home, I was getting slapped on the leg, like, yo, John, listen to me. Da, 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 da. And I'm getting slapped harder and harder every five minutes. I was kinda hard. And uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was <laughs> like, you know, at a certain point I don't want to ever hit a woman. Never but at a point. You swing, you swing it, bro. You might have to swing. You feel me? Yeah. Have you seen the Dana White situation? No. Dana White just slapped the shit out of his woman at a bar. Ooh. But his woman slapped first. So all the fans are defending him at this very moment. Really? But, like, the media wants Dana White to get fired and all this bullshit. But the video shows that she slapped the shit out of him. And then she he slapped the shit out of her. Yeah. And then whatever happened, happened after. Ah, uh, dude. See, I'm a little toxic when it comes to that situation. With those situations, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm like, a girl slap, like, girl has to slap me numerous times, punch me numerous times for me to do something. Otherwise, I'm, I'm deflecting, I'm pushing, I'm trying to get away. I'm not gonna engage in it, you know. So people say that, and I say, if I like, let's say we're on, in a gathering. Yeah. I have a couple girl friends. Yep. On this side, I'm with my girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I got a couple of my boys over here. She got a couple of her boys. She got a couple of her girlfriends. We're all together. And she starts swinging. Mm. I'm praying that my women as friends see that someone is swinging at me. And her guy friends, not my guy friends, should not be touching her. My guy friends should be touching me. Her guy friends see that she's getting a little reckless where they should split up the situation Mm -hmm. before it gets ugly. Mm -hmm. But if you're getting the fuck beat out of, it's a one-on-one. War. (laughs) War. And the reason I said that is because I've never touched a woman in my life. And even in this situation, I was in Puerto Rico. And my boy was dancing with some shorty. And then nigga said, Yaga! Kind of pulled her hair, yanked her shit. She got up. And instead of looking back on the girl, on the guy he was, she was dancing with, she looked forward where I was vibing. And she said, bah, bah, punched me. Gave me like two pieces straight to my hey, chest. You had nothing to do with it? Nothing to do with it, bro. Like, let's say we're a group of guys chilling. She just, she was drunk, decided to dance on one dude. Yep. And I'm like, yeah. And let's say Pepe was on. Babe, I'm like, yeah. Hola, and he God. was just like this. Grabbed her hair and was still hitting it from the back, whatever. Let go while she was coming up. And lit as fuck. She just said, binks, binks. And I'm in Puerto Rico, bro. I've never yeah. seen this bitch in my life. Yeah. Binks, binks, hit me in the chest. Didn't feel it. 
I would, I'm with my boys. They separated. She comes around. She threw a drink at me. She comes around, threw a drink at me. She's with her girls. Yeah. Who's separating it? And I'm talking about like the first drink. I'm talking about some brolic man with his girl. Like, yo, yo, what's going on, man? Like, what? I'm like, yo, some shorty's going crazy. She's throwing drinks at me. I'm not doing anything. It's okay, but like, I'm trying to settle him down because he. I don't want to see that they he, thought a man was fighting with a girl. Yeah. I'm like, nah, she's going crazy throwing drinks. She threw a drink at us. And he just kept walking. He's like, all right, yo, see you later type shit. Like, ah, right, fuck that. And then another group of girls, the second time she threw a drink, another group came, yo, you can't be fighting with girls. I'm like, yo, I'm not fighting with girls. I'm telling you, not, I'm yeah. not doing anything. Like, they're, they're arguing with me a little bit. She throws another drink. It hits them, too. So it's hitting them and hit the buff, nigga. And you know what I'm saying? And they're like, oh, oh, and they walked away, too. She's with, like, four friends. And at a certain point, I just walked up and I said, mm-hmm. I just mushed a shot at her and slid her all the way, like, three, four feet. And her friends finally grabbed her and was like, oh, and they left. Mm. But I got like two, three drinks thrown at me. I got two piece to the chest. Bop, bop. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? At a, a certain lot. point, you know what I'm saying? Like, and we're in the middle of nowhere. No one knows who anybody is. And if they're like, oh, you're fighting a woman? I'm like, no. And they got a drink thrown at them. A group of girls like, oh, you're fighting a woman? I'm like, no. They got a drink thrown at them. Yep, yep. I'm like, yeah, that's it. You, you know how I feel now? They're like, all right, my fault, my fault, my fault. Yeah. You know <laughs> so, toxic, bro. <laughs> I don't know. You can't bring toxic out in public. No. And you should know who you're dating and what's going on in public. What do you think about uh, this whole Tinder generation that's going on? Social media dating. Have you ever downloaded that? Dude, I mean, to each his own, but, like, honestly, like, me, myself, I, would, I don't think I'd ever, like, take it, uh, take somebody I met on, like, Tinder or uh, those dating sites serious. I'd rather go. You to never old, put a ring on it. You mean? Yeah, I'd rather go to old traditional, meet the grandma at church. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like we talked about earlier. <laughs> I'm about to start going meet to church. Grand, grand, meet grand grandma at church. You know, pull yeah. up. Not even go to church. Just pull up, like you know, all like fresh, mm-hmm. dress up nice, and just keep an eye out for the grandmas that have the nice granddaughters. Yeah. You know, say, hey, yeah. have a great day, have a good night. Yeah, yeah, Next yeah, week, yeah, do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After like three, four weeks, you you you're in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. At church, you, you, you there's a segment where he the the priest says, "Oh, make la paz," or everyone handshake each other. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. So at that time, you know, like keep an eye out, look for the grandmas yeah. with the baddies, like look out, like, oh shit. And then when they do la paz, you know, make that eye contact. Be like, oh, what's up? What's up? Man? I'm in here. I'm here. I'm at church. <laughs> I ain't at the club in the VIPs. I'm at church. I'm front at row. Church. Front. I mean, uh, front row, but you know, up, up, up close. Listen, we were talking about alpha women, alpha men earlier. Yep. What do you think about alpha men? Um. So I, I, um. So alpha men, right? So I would change it for myself. I would for I, my of course, man. I got you. So for myself, I would change it to a high value man. And I have nothing. I have I think nothing. That's what you said earlier. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said high value man. And I'd say, yeah, that, that I feel like that's the goal that everyone um, or males, you know, myself, like that's what we strive for to be a high value man. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That means you provide for yourself and your family. Like if you have kids and a wife, you provide for them, you work hard and you, you, you strive to give them a, a, you know, a good life. Um, if you don't have kids at the moment and you have parents that, that brought you to this country and they, you know, gave up their whole life for you, I, I re- really recommend that, you know, you work hard, you grind, look at them, look at their work ethic and you strive to give them more than what they gave you. You know, that should always be your goal. Do yep. better than the generation that came before you. Nice. And if you grind, you work hard, you can really create generational wealth. What does generational wealth mean? It means that your kids of your kids of your kids will all be good, well, and, and better off. But, you know, as you're creating this wealth and creating a better, um, you know, monetary position for, for the kids under you, you need to instill values into them and you need to in- instill culture into them. I really believe that the cultures that we come from, from, you know, South America, the Caribbean, Central America, we have true cultures, true values. And I feel like we need to instill that into our communities and into our kids. And if we do that, with the knowledge that we know and they grow, they'll be wealthy, but they'll also be good people because money, you know, is, is not everything. I mean, it's mm-hmm. something, but it's not anything unless you have good values and good, um, a good heart on your shoulders. And that way, you know, that, that's what makes you a real good person on this world and worth like, you know, somebody worth it. You know, do you think there's high value women? Of course, of course. It's high value woman. I mean, you know, I feel like men and women, there's high value in both of them. What those values are, I feel like it's different for everyone. Uh, I mean, I know it's controversial, but uh, you've probably heard Andrew Tate. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so very controversial. I listen to, you know, things he says, and I feel like a lot of things he, he mentions, you know, he has good points. Um, a lot of you out there will say, oh, well, what are his, you know, what what are the good points? What are this? What are that? You've probably only watched minor clips of him that make him sound bad, but if you really listen to the two to three hour podcasts that he puts on or the whole content, you'll realize that he does have some good points in there. So what that means is that there's high value men and there's high value women. What those traits are and what those things are, it could be different for both of them. Um, doesn't make it any less. I think both are great when, you know, both are great in their own way. I like that. Anything else you want to add? Um, stay away from toxic relationships. This is going to give you a 360. So just making sure. What do, what do you think the next topic is since I asked you about high value men and high value women? Not sure. Paul. Well, I asked you men. <laughs> I asked you about high value men and alpha men, and now I'm asking you about high value women. What do you think the topic is going to be? I don't know. That's a tough one, man. You're Andrew Tate fan. That's what I'm saying. No. Who says? Oh, yo, yo. You're not Andrew Tate yeah, fan. I'm getting labeled right now. No. <laughs> Are you an Andrew Tate fan or not Andrew uh, Tate fan? I'm an Andrew Tate fan. I'm not gonna say I'm not. I listen to him. I listen okay. to him. I, I agree. Said, with, if you're I a high value points. man, you can have as many women as you want because you provide for all these women and you do whatever you want to do. I like him. See. There's this, there's this, is that true or false or am I saying it wrong? Say that again. That you're a high value man. Let's yep. say you make 500K or a million or 500 million a year. Bajillion. You have the right to have a woman. You have the right to have multiple women because one woman is not the same value as you. And that multiple women could be in your bedroom at the end of the day. Do you believe in that? I mean, it depends. I'd have to see like if, what exactly he said it in, what context he said it mm-hmm. in. But I'd have to say that if you're married, you're done. If you're married, okay. you or if you're married, Put a ring on it. If you're married or you have a kid, it's over. Done. You're locked you, in. You're locked forever. in. That's it. Forever. You gotta be the most loyal fucking dude on the planet. So you don't believe that you know toxic little baby mama baby daddy vibes. It's it's more healthier for them to be separate. I mean, at that point, if you had a kid... Oh, so here's the one thing, man. I respect people that... See, some people will talk down on people that have baby mamas or whatnot. I respect them. Because at the end of the day, like, dude, they didn't get... The, they, they understood that they were going to have a kid. They fucking put their big boy pants on and they were like, mm-hmm. have the kid. And kept them around. Kept them around. You know, they, they could have took the easy route Regardless out of other if, people. If you think she's a B or not. Yeah, they could have done the easy route out and be like, no, no, I don't want the kid. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, handle it some way, right? They could have done shit like that. But instead, they said, you know what? I'm going to put the big boy pants on, whether whatever or not, like, let's have it. Or, like, you know, like, I don't believe in getting rid of it. Let's have it. So, like, I respect those people, man. Even if you have, like, one, two, three baby mamas, I respect you. Yeah. I respect you hell a lot, to be honest. I respect those guys, bro. Are you prepared to what I'm about to show you right now, though? Um, I'm excited. A little conversation that we have right now. Dude, what do you expect the next video is going to be? Dude, this is tough. This is tough. I, mean, I asked tough. you about Blueface. high value men, alpha men, and then I said, what about women? This is about women. What yes. about women? And I just said what Andrew Tate says. We're seeing you, Tate. What is that? We're seeing Andrew Tate. No, it's not Andrew Tate. No, man. not Tate. Oh, man. What is it's it? It's Andrew Tate energy that I just gave you a minute ago, but I'm saying. Depends. Women, are women on the same Dude, level? I love, I listen to, con- I listen to content from both sides, mm-hmm. pocket, everything. I'm ready for anything. Bro. Okay. Let's fucking Let's watch it, it and then we'll talk it. about Let's it. Let's get it. How do you say it that way? I like that. Let's get I like it. the way you said it. I just felt entitled to it as well. Oh. It was just dysfunctional oh from day one. Yeah. I was paying all the bills. I was working my ass off and I felt like that's what comes. Neither one of us felt like the marriage should get in the way of our dating. Dating? Gabrielle Union, why I felt entitled to cheat on my man because I paid all the fucking bills. Dude. Dude. This is Andrew Tate 101. Women's style. This is literally take the course. Sign up to Hustlers University, Andrew Tate edition. This is literally it right now. So all the bitch-ass alphas out there, this is alpha Gabrielle Union where she felt like, I could date because I paid the fucking bills. How do you feel about a woman paying the bills 
and being able to date whoever they want. And this, this is, is marriage. They got married. Yeah, no, nah, this is this is. And the last part was energy. like we shouldn't have got married. Should never got to that level. But I felt entitled as a woman because I'm paying the bills. I can cheat on my man. How do you feel? Ah, man, her argument is just not good because I feel like she's given like the open freeway, the open like liberty for men to do the same thing. Or it's for men, the argument that they've made for years and years and years. She's like, she's like agreeing with them. So it, it, honestly, I feel like she's in the wrong in this one, to be honest, man. So she's fucking this up for all the women. Ah. The first woman to come out and say, I'm yeah. alpha. Yeah. This is what alpha men are doing. <laughs> I'm paying the bills. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. I feel like this is a a, a point in the masculinity book mm -hmm. because it's like if, if if more girls come out and, and explain what she says and like it, like reciprocate the energy that she's bringing out, man, it's 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 gonna be tough because like you know that's what males have been saying for generations and and you know we've been looked down well men have been looked down upon and said no you know it's an equal you know you gotta be you know together this mm -hmm. and this like you know so for her to go out and say that man she's Ballsy. But is she bringing women back or is she bringing women forward to understand their worth? To be honest with you, I think she's bringing women, women forward. Okay. I like the fact that she's like out there saying, like, yo, like, I paid this, I did this, I did this. So fuck it. Like, I'm entitled to cheat. I'm like, all right, I respect it. But then at the same time, it's like you have like, you know, people on the other side of the spectrum saying, well, you know, guys, like, you know, like this and this and this, like, they shouldn't be, you know, um, they shouldn't have, you know, date multiple women. They shouldn't cheat, like, blah, 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 you know? So it's, like, it's it's tough, man. This is, like, a, the same scenario as if a guy was doing it. So mm -hmm. if you're looking at this, like, blindly, no male or female, like, you're just looking at this, you'd be like, yo, she's she's fucked up. In a scenario of what? Say one more time? Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, 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 no. I want to hear what you said. Yes. I want to agree with you. What would you say? If you're looking at this as a scenario of, like, She's a guy. Let's say she was a guy. Uh huh. And she said this. You'd be like, damn, that guy's fucked up. Okay, 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 okay. okay <laughs> you know okay, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're like, yo, he's fucked up. Like, why is he saying this? But why? we're not in the in the money range of the people that we're talking about mm -hmm. where men are actually doing this. So if a woman does it, I'd be like, go, sis. Yeah. I see now. I said, go, sis. I needed to put it on a man podcast. Dude. I'm on some go, sis energy. You said they're. You're pushing women forward. You said that, right? Yes. I didn't say that. My words, it was his words. You're, she's pushing women forward. She is. At her level. Not no OnlyFans shorty. Yes. Not no bullshit. Gabrielle Union, who is a top dog. Yes. And her man was not top dog. But, you know what I'm saying? She's pushing women forward. She's pushing women forward in a movement at the same time, it's fucked up whether you're a woman or a male. It's fucked up for both scenarios to yep. be like, oh, I'm so rich that I'm just going to like cheat on my partner because they're not on my level. It's fucked up for both scenarios. But at the end of the day, I feel like, uh, I mean, like, you know, at least women can see this and be like, damn, like, you know, they can be the alpha male. They can be the person that provides does this, this and that. Mm -hmm. But as far as the cheating part, I mean, I think it's fucked up for both scenarios. Um, but I guess it's a sign. Um, they're coming up. They're coming up. And at the same time, it's like, you know, we've frowned down upon males for maybe spreading this message for so long that now that a female is doing it, like, what are, what are we going to say? What are people going to say? I, I'm really curious, honestly. Like, I'll be honest with you, Pena. Like, I follow news. I follow Twitter. I follow Instagram. I follow a lot of things. But I'm really curious. I haven't followed this that much. I heard on the radio maybe two days ago. And I haven't followed up on it. I usually, I usually do. I usually mm -hmm. follow up on every news I read. But I'm really curious to see, like, you know, what the comments are on this. And and, and I'm, I'm very curious, man. I mean, as of right now, I'm like, she bugged. <laughs> let me let me say, men think this is wrong. Bugged. What if men find this wrong? If men find this wrong, yeah. ah, see, that's the easy argument. I feel like shut the fuck up. Dude. Okay, shut okay. up, dude. That's that's the easy argument. It's like, dude, shut up, dude, man. Guys, guys, even though we don't want to admit it nowadays because, like, you know, you get canceled, you get, like, this and that yeah, and yeah. that. You, you guys do this and guys feel this way. Mm -hmm. So, like, shut up for her saying this. But if you're, on, if you're, like, a guy that says, like, hey, look, I've been canceled. I've been, like, ridiculed. I've been this and that because I've spread this message. For example, Andrew Tate. Mm -hmm. When you see something like this, you're like, 
What now we're her? equal. Like, what about her? Like, what do you mean? Like, she's spreading the same message that I'm spreading. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't get canceled and she doesn't get the same ridicule that he did, it's like, where are we? What's the spectrum now? But men should be canceling her, not women. Because mm. women are going to empower mm. that situation because that's what we wanted. Not we because I'm not a woman, but that's what they've wanted for months and years. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Man, honestly, I would say that that is a toughie because, um, you know, we've we've bullied, we've ridiculed the, the the men that have spoken up and said things like this. So now for her to come out and say something like this, and, and I, I like I said, I haven't. It's the norm. I haven't seen what the media where anyone says, so it's tough. It's the norm now. Boss bitches out here. You know what I'm saying? I thought we weren't saying the B word. Yeah, but boss bitches is a good word. That is a good word. It's a, good it's a positive way. It's a good phrase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a positive way. We can't say the F word, though. What's that? The F word. F A G? F M E? F E M? You did say the F E M word. Did I? What's F E M? A. -E. L? Yeah, and you put the S. Oh. That's even worse. Jesus. Yeah. I was going to tell you, but I was like, let him go. You know, I couldn't give you the. The heads up, but you said with the S, and the S is where they hate it. They don't hate. They Plural. don't. They don't, they don't like yeah. being grouped together, right? No, they like the the, the singular version. And you said the all of them with the S. Okay, honest. I'm gonna get canceled before I even start. It's the clips I make, bro. Cheers. You pour me. I already drink mine. Dude, before I get canceled. Nah, cheers, cheers. All right, I'll clip that out. Clip that out. Damn, film to the rim, bro. I love this shit. You can have the last one. Cheers. Cheers. I'm lit, bro. I'm glad to hear all your experiences, my boy. We've talked about shoulder injuries. We've talked about entitlement. We've talked about beating your father-in-law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to have a segment about what we talk about, like, um, finances. Money, the, finances. You want to talk about money and finances? Yeah. I know you got some topics, so at the end, like this is the end. Right here. What do you got about finances? No, I got another topic, but it's a little woman empowerment segment. <laughs> but what do you want to talk about finances and stuff? What do you got for me, bro? So I feel like I've touched upon this a little bit during the show, but again, you know, all my the people that know me, the the from I'm from, and all you people that are from like you know um, cities or towns, and you grew up in an environment where it's uh, you know. Money isn't really talked about. I get you. I understand you. I've, I've been in the same same scenario, same same situation, right? But if you really work hard and you look out for these opportunities, for example, entrepreneurship, which is what I said at the beginning of the podcast, entrepreneurship is you being your own business within a business. Am I my own boss? You are your own boss. Okay. You are your own boss. You get your appointments. You get, you know, um, your own work schedule. You get things you have to do. I'm not saying it's easy. Nothing in life is easy. Mm -hmm. No, nothing in this world that's worth having is easy. So don't get me wrong. It's not easy, right? But if you put your effort and you put your mindset to it, you can be very successful. And the best part about it is you don't have to have most of the risk. You have the ability and the opportunity to switch your lifestyle just like that. So, for example, you do this for two, three years. You make six figures. You're selling under someone. You're making your commissions. You're making money. You're making good money. And at some point, you say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. That's fine. You can literally transition over to something else. But now you have the experience. You have the sales like experience. And you can move over to something completely different and, and make, make something out of it. Or you can make your own business. So this is kind of like schooling for entrepreneurship. This is kind of like the beginning steps of where you get to be your own business person. Because again, you don't have to deal with the headaches or you know the costs of running your own business. So you work this, you do it for two, three years, you make your money, you do your things, you know what I mean? And again, to buy a property, to buy different things, you need two years of tax returns in order to, to, to get a property, to do this, to do that. 
That's all you need. You need two years. So That's something I didn't know that you need two years to fucking buy a property. And I racked up 15K and my, I told my dad, I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go buy my spot and rent out another spot. Da, 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 da. And he goes, oh, you can't do that. Why can't I do that after two years or before two years? Yes. So the the government, the the you know, whatever it is, the government, IRS, I don't know exactly who it is, but they require two years of tax returns. So you need two years of tax returns in order to buy a property. But you also need two years of tax returns with good income to buy the property. So for example, um, you know, let's put it like this. I'm a young person. I graduated college. It's 2019, right? I graduated Assumption University in 2019. I graduated college. I have my income, yada, yada, yada. I'm a 1099 worker. When you're a 1099 worker, it's a little bit different than W-2. When you're a 1099 worker, you can write things off, right? So I took advantage of that. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to write things off, be my own business, be my own entrepreneur, like what I'm telling you guys. And I'm going to have um, small income, right? I'm going to write things off. So I did that. Okay, bet. The next year, I made more income and I'm like, now I'm ready to buy a property. You know, I have the money, I have the cash, I'm ready. When you go to a mortgage lender and they review your paperwork, they're going to say, wait a minute, Xavier, in 2019, you wrote off this, 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 and this, and this. You only made like 15K, 20K, like that's not enough. So even though you have the cash, it doesn't matter. It's what's on the paperwork that matters, right? So I learned that. So now for this upcoming year, my paperwork is in line. I got my cash. I got my paperwork all set and good with an accountant. I got my tax plan ready. Boom. I'll pay my taxes and I'm ready now to buy one, two houses and lease my apartment. And How I'm many houses do you own right go. now? Right now, got a triple decker. Nice. My parents got a single family home. I helped them. You know, I, I moved. I, I helped them buy it. You're in the industry. You helped your parents buy it. Helped them buy yep. the pilot. Helped them buy the single family so they can get set up. That's one thing too. Never forget about your parents. They brought you here. They got you everything mm. you own. They got you everything you do. Never forget about them. Treat them people right, man. Treat your parents right, man. Like I can't. I, I hate when people just leave, do the thing, and leave their parents behind, man. That's fucked up. Yep. So got them a single family. They're chilling in there. Now this upcoming year, I'm good to go, man. I'm going to be making some moves. So so keep an eye out. I mean, after this podcast, you know, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on, on TikTok. I'll, I'll put my names in the chat. And, I, and, and I'll help you make the same moves that I made. But 2023, we're making moves. Believe that. That was smoother than the shit that you showed me earlier. From the heart, man. I told you, bro. That's all I was and telling you, bro. Relax. Aguardiente, and now, yeah, man. A little bit of Oy. seeing Asuka had to give him a little confidence, but I was like, bro. He was like, yo, I got points and shit that I tell you. There ain't no motherfucking points out here, bro. Tell these motherfuckers what you want to say. You know what I'm saying? That, at the end of the day, bro, they literally want like a heart to heart business, mean, whatever. What you Let me tell you this right now. If you're making forty to fifty k, sixty k, bro. Quit that job right now or hold the job on for a little bit. Go on LinkedIn, go on uh, in your community and find out companies that sell roofing, sell HVAC, sell uh, construction, decking, things like that. Get into that environment. They'll offer you free training. The legit companies will offer you free training. Get into that free training program, yeah. get paid, learn, and then you start selling those products into sales. You'll make six figures in two years. Guarantee it. If you're a person that's motivated, has their mind in the right mind, and you're and you're disciplined, most importantly, like we talked about earlier, you will make six figures in a year or two years. Get into that industry. Sales in those trades. I'm telling you right now, get into it. What do you think about solar? Oh, my God. Up here in North. Amazing. Future. Up here? Yes. Okay. Fire. It all depends. If the property makes sense, it makes sense. But solar is it's taking off, people. It's taking off. Especially in Massachusetts because Biden, in the last uh, energy audit bill that he passed in September slash November, mm. he's giving a 30% tax credit, which means that let's say your solar roof, yeah, yeah, yada, is 100 grand. The government's giving you 30% back. So that means you only, instead of 100 grand, you paid 70 grand. It's huge. Big. I like that. Big, big. So Anything else you want to drop? 
You uh, weren't talking with cojones like that five minutes ago. Nah. Well, like an hour and a half. But like, you what? weren't talking about like that half an hour ago. Nah, I know. That guardentico, man. That shit gets me going. And plus you, man. I'm telling you, you got good energy. You got good vibes. It's a good shit you put on. Like, I appreciate it. And just needs to be in my comfort zone to be able to share things. So, honestly, like, I'm excited for 2023. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for years to come. And I really just want people to, like, do good and experience the things that I've experienced. Like, I'm telling you, I'm, 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 I'm preaching it. I used to be the guy that I was like, yo, my goal is make 100K, live on Salisbury Street, and I fucking made it. Mm -hmm. That was my goal. Here in Worcester. Here in, yeah, here in Worcester. And now I'm like, yo, wait a minute. Whoa, I'm talking to people that are making like 200, 300. I'm like, whoa, hold up a second. Hold up a second. Time out, time out, time out, time out. You know what I mean? What are you guys doing? And that's when I learned networking, podcasts, meeting people, sales. Man, I'm telling you, it's out there for, for any of us. You yep. don't have to be connected. You don't have to be Social generational. Media. Bro, I'm an immigrant. My parents came here. My parents, like, barely, like, they barely speak English, bro. Barely. Like, like I have to help them with, like, Zoom calls. I have to help them with, like, bills. I have to help them with a bunch of shit. Yep. And I help them with that. I don't care. Like, you know, I like it. Like, I help them with it. But at the end of the day, it's like, damn, like, bro. It don't matter. Like you can still make it big. Like don't 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 keep your mind closed and be like, damn, my parents did this. I got to do a little bit better than them. Don't do a little better than them. Do exceed, fucking amazing. Bro. Exceed that shit. Help them. Like you know, dude. You know what the best feeling was, Pena? Best feeling was I went with my dad. Right, we went to Home Depot. Dude, my dad makes like twenty an hour, bro. He's a straight up factory worker. Mm -hmm. Like, like straight up like. Like, factory worker, bro. Like, hard working as dude, bro. He was like, you know what? We're doing this addition for the house. I'm going to Home Depot. The guy wants, like, this and this, right? And he and I told him, I'm like, dude, bro, like, credit cards. Like, you can get an Amex. You can get this. Get points. And he's like, I wish, bro, but my Home Depot card, it has so much debt on it. It has this, that, and this. I'm like, okay, like, let's go to Home Depot. He gets the cement that we need to, like, build the foundation. And he, get, and he buys a couple other things. And the bill comes out to like three hundred, and his bill's a thousand, so it's a thousand three hundred. And he's like, "Damn, he he's stressing." He's like, "A thousand three hundred. He's like, "Fuck, like, I'm not gonna be able to buy this or like this. I'm not gonna be able to afford this. I can't afford this." He's like, "Fuck." He's stressing. And bro, at this point, I'm like, "Dude, like, I'm doing good for myself. I got money." I'm like, "Bro," I'm like, "Dad, don't worry about it, bro. Here's the money for this. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. I got you. You know what I mean." Him and my mom, like, sometimes because money's tight, like, maybe, like, they don't get along or shit happens. I'm like, don't worry about it. Friday Friday night, we're gonna we're going out to dinner on me. I got the dinner. Mm -hmm. Don't fucking worry about it. I got it. And, bro, that's a different feeling. When you're able to give your parents, the people that gave you everything, and you're able to give them dinners, you know, pay bills for them, help them out. Dude, I'm telling you, like, it's a fucking different feeling, bro. It's a different fucking feeling. Without a college degree. You have a college degree, but your job does not require a college degree. Look, I have a college degree. I went to Assumption University. Great college. I played soccer there. I love all my time there. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. But in reality, in reality, mm -hmm. for what I'm doing now, making the money I'm making, living comfortably, helping my parents, doing all this shit, did I need a college degree? No. No, I did not. All I needed was my discipline the right mentors mm -hmm. and fucking putting myself out there. That's all I needed. And I will add American common sense. Yes. Cause if what well, you said, your first gen on first gen, a lot of our family does not have American common sense. Well, you guys already know on a daily basis, foreigners do not know. And they have a business before you have a business. There's a 40 year old couple down the street that has a business on the corner paying a thousand or thirteen hundred dollars a month while you're like, yeah, I'm a business entrepreneur. In reality, they could be making a million dollars a year and your dumbass is still not doing anything because they did what they wanted to do without knowing what the fuck to do. So a little merit common sense could make any entrepreneur that goes to any shop that they want to. To do marketing and social media for people like our parents and our and grandparents. Listen, we're in the Double D segment. It's a quick segment. 
We're not going to do anything crazy. We just have to appreciate the woman of the night. And the woman of the night, I'm going to show you in like two seconds because we weren't connected because we've been on. But the W segment is referring to any females that's popping that week, growing or blowing up. Not about her features, but referring to a female empowerment in a funny way and promoting a female in different ways. Have you watched Wednesday? Wednesday. You don't know what Wednesday is? No, what is that? That is crazy that you said Wednesday. Like, you haven't watched Wednesday? No. You know the Adams Family? No. <laughs> no. Like our childhood? It's the Adams Family. No, I don't. Oh, man, I feel... Get out of my house. I'm kind of embarrassed right now. Get out of my house. <laughs> you don't know Wednesday? I see Zendaya there, so if Zendaya's there, I know Zendaya. No, no, I didn't even want to mention Zendaya yet. You I don't know, know what Wednesday is? I don't. Or the Adams Family? No, I don't. Or what I just said two seconds ago? No, I don't. <laughs> wow! Are you dead ass? Oh, no. You might be a little Shit. more SPIC than I am. SPIC, what's that? Yeah, the word SPIC. <laughs> Anyways, Zendaya won um, the global. Hold on, let me say it real quick. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to say it wrong. Yeah, look it up. Look it up. The Golden Globe Awards for a TV actress for Euphoria. Have you watched Euphoria? Euphoria? Yes, I have. I've watched a few episodes of. The you film. watch Euphoria? You haven't yes. watched The Adams Family or no. Wednesday? No, Euphoria. I have. What streaming platforms do you have? Uh, I got Netflix and uh, YouTube. What's he for you on? HBO. I watched that at a friend's house. The whole season. Um, Isn't it like three seasons? Yeah, I only watched the first season. And then I watched a couple clips of like the third season, the way it ends. Like the little guy. Yeah. What's the little guy's name? The kid. I didn't watch you for you. You didn't watch it? I don't have HBO money, man. Dude, you're coming at me like no, I, I I'm watch coming it. at you for that. Listen up, guys. I don't know where uh, we're coming from, and uh, we're about to say our goodbyes and our last few comments. But uh, my man's asking if we did a good podcast, so drop in the comments if we did a good podcast. And we're still live. At least we're still fucking live. But thank fuck this fucking battery. I don't know what the hell what happened. I don't know where it cut us off. I think we're having a great conversation. But anyways, Zendaya is our queen of the night. Anything else you want to ask or anything else you want to say for the night? Man, like I said, I love podcasts. Mm -hmm. I've been intrigued with podcasts since day one. So I'm, I'm always a fan of Pena's podcast. So Dominican John, Jonathan with the Pena, Jonathan with Dominican. Follow him on all like social medias. Like honestly, like I'm What's your social medias? Uh, my social media on Instagram at SabiCar1. Follow me there. That's my main source of That's your uh, Instagram? Instagram. Savvy Car One. Yep. Um, oh. I also have um another pod another Instagram that's more business related. It's X the Roof Guy One. Oh, yeah. You wanna follow me there? Follow me there as well. But you know, I'm working on my content. So what does X the Roof Guy do? Oh man, X the Roof Guy. What does he do, man? He drives around. <laughs> Your delivery boy for 100k a year? No, no, no. So he meets with clients, prospective clients, okay. and we're selling them on like 30, 40 grand of product. So if you get them to sign a 30, 40 grand of product, think about it, you're making 10%. So I'm meeting with two of those people a day. Two of those people a day. All I got to do is sell. So how many do you lock in a week or a month? Mm, that's what, it. You, guys, the... you just got to sell two of them a week. Two, three, two or three of them a week. That's what I did the past couple of years. Yeah. And I made the income I made. Now, this year, my goal is to close three of them. If you get better at this industry and you close more people, three of them, man, the sky's the limit. That's what I'm working towards. That's what I'm working towards. Any other out outros or anything else you want to say? Man. Before we get into the Malibu vibes and just chill. Yeah, we're getting Malibu vibes, chill. We're going to Funkies. If anyone's watching live. I don't know what's with you and Funkies, bro. I'm not going to Funkies. <laughs> you going to Funkies by yourself. Yo, Wednesday, I heard it's uh, karaoke night at Whiskey. That's what I heard. That's where you went? Oh, yeah. That's what I heard. <laughs> Yo, we out, yo. Yes, yeah, the Mega John I'm here with. Xavier Carmona. F again, follow me on Instagram, SavvyCar1. TikTok, I'm low-key, but Pison Man 1. I'm here with the intropreneur. Intrapreneur again. I said it right. Intro, yes. Intrapreneur again. Yo, my people, don't forget this line. Ready? My last thing I'm gonna leave with you with. Intrapreneur. You're dead ass an entrepreneur. You're a business owner, but you're a business owner within the business. What does that mean? 
That means you get your own clients, you make your own schedule, you do your own thing, right? But you're under someone's entity. What does that mean? You make your money you, as long as hard as you work, you make that money like back. But someone else is take, taking the headaches. For example, someone else is taking the liabil- liabilities, the business costs to, to, to operate a business. All you got to worry about is selling. All you got to worry about is getting clients. All you got to worry about is making money. That's it. Someone else higher than you is taking all the responsibility, taking all the liabilities, taking all the headaches. That's it. I'm telling you, entrepreneur, that's the future, man. Do that for a few years. It's like entrepreneur in the making. It's like a training camp. And then you open up your own shit. I'm telling you right now. Without worrying about the expenses. And worrying about your own motherfucking money. Facts. Nothing else. All you got to worry about is your money. And like I said, like Pena said, making six figures right now. I'm blessed. Hopefully I keep making more. Amen.